start the show. Introducing the first ever PTZ Optics World Studio Tour. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Richards. And I'm Tess Protesto. Thank you for joining. This is actually our second, I'm sorry, second, second episode. Stop. But the first ever annual World Studio Tour on our second stop. Yeah, where does the stop take us today? Today. So Paul? last today, week, today. we were in Hillsdale, Michigan at a mobile video van by Scott Th Pienta. That was fun. That was a really cool show. Go back and watch that if you have time. We're going today. Crossing the entire country to Willamette University outside Salem, Oregon, where Christopher Sabato is the athletic director, media uh, assistant director of media and live streaming. What a title. What a title. He's going to tell us all about it. This is actually the person that, that we really want to talk to about how he does his live streaming for all kinds of different sports. Yeah. And he's got, we found, uh, we kind of connected on the Facebook user group. Mm -hmm. So it's a great use for that. Here's, this is our office here, PTC Optics, over in Philadelphia. So all of this is happening um, very quickly and over the, the beautiful live streaming world that we have. We're going to connect all together. So let's it's start. It's great that there's actual positions such as Chris. I know. Like I'm out there for people. <laughs> like it's such a cool position. If you like live streaming and you like sports, this seems like the perfect position. Um, we did want to show really quickly that we are building a new studio. So as part of the new studio tour, so we're hoping to each week show you a little bit more of what we're trying Maybe to design. Maybe the, by the end of the World Studio tour, tour, our new building and studio will be ready. I think so. I think finally by the end of the studio tour in December, we're going to have a new studio <gasps> done. Completely so redone. Now what you just saw there is two different renditions. One with a studio I guess, what would you call that? A control a room? Yeah, producer control With room. a window. And the window's not cheap. It's like $2,000 with the wall. So we had a little show about this. A lot of decisions to make. We need your help, certainly. We're definitely asking you guys, what do you think? You know, do, yeah. you, do you like the control room idea? Or do you like the open floor plan idea? A lot of people um, were digging the open floor plan. But yes. we have kind of a new idea of um, having Paul's office connected to the studio yes. and sort of a pseudo control room. Now, so I also wanted to option. show this little thing we found here. This is a company called Argozi that m if we go with the opens floor plan, they have these really cool live streaming desks for the producer. They are cool. So if we are going to have an open floor plan, and we all know how much a single studio operator can do, mm -hmm. I think this furniture might be a really cool thing. So yeah. check that out. We're going to be looking you into might, it. You guys might just to get get excuse me i'm tongue-tied today you might just get to meet the man who's going to be sitting at that desk next week that's true we're next growing Monday. in more ways than one that's going to be fun so let's do a studio update or a, a social media update test you want to start with instagram or facebook uh let's start with facebook okay all right we always have to highlight our facebook user group you it we showed this video of yours earlier this week great shot of uh high up tripod outdoor sports environment very similar to what christopher has going on um, with the ptz optics cameras some great stuff being shown there uh, we also had big news this week uh, vimeo just acquired live stream i'm not quite sure what that means yet but i'm very interested to see what happens there what else do we have here? Paul's been coming up with a lot oh, of great stuff Finney. about latency that he's going to touch on later mm -hmm. this week. And since today is kind of all about sports streaming, we're going to end on Drake, who uh, shared his live stream of a volleyball game using the PTZ Optics cameras. So keep sharing the content on the user group with us, guys. It's really helpful for us to see what you guys need the cameras for and um, things you need to learn more about. So thank you guys so much. Great content there. And... Um, did you want to show something else on no, this fine. clip? Okay, so moving on to Instagram. I want to take you guys into our Instagram page. We got some fun stuff going on. Stream Geeks actually is officially the ones that are um, holding the giveaway that we're having Monday, which is a frame grabber. So if you want to sign up for our next big giveaway, that will be Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Stream Geeks YouTube and Facebook. So um, one more thing, I got a private message from I am Van Man. <laughs> which is kind of a fun name, but he has a custom PTZ Optics camera case, which was really cool. What was the uh, company name? Monoprice. Monoprice. So 
So thanks for sharing that. Send me your your uh, camera pictures, your content, your videos. We want to share them live on our show. Okay, so last thing I wanted to throw out there is that I've been doing some latency testing just to really get to the bottom of exactly what the latency is for camera control. So whether it be an iOS device, an IP joystick, an RS-232 joystick, an Xbox controller like we showed on Back to Basics on Wednesday, and I've actually calculated exactly what the latency is for each control device. So that was posted on the Facebook user group, but that might be a little confusing because what we really need to know is that that information and also the latency for video. So whether you're getting your video from SDI or HDMI or USB or over IP or via NDI, we take the latency from the video and the latency from the control and there's going to be a little bit of a gap there and that's the difference between what you're controlling with your joystick and what you're seeing. So we're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, I don't think it's, it's getting a lot better. Our Gen 2 cameras are much better with latency. And then there's also the software that you're using. For example, vMix reports right at the bottom here the render time and it's 42 seconds, 50 milliseconds, sorry, 50, 30 to 50 milliseconds, so a half of a that's actually not too bad, but anyway, we're going to get to the bottom of it all. We're going to put it all together and figure out exactly how many milliseconds the control and latency is. Sorry for all the techie goofiness. They so, love it, don't they? <laughs> hopefully you guys like that kind of stuff. We're going to bring back the lightning round, and yeah. Tess is going to go ahead and jump into a lightning round with jump over here. Christopher, and I'm really shot. excited for this. So here we go. Ready for this? I am ready. Okay, coffee or tea? Um, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. So you uh -huh. do like your caffeine, just in a little different way. Mac or PC? Uh, I am a PC guy, but I, I have a I have a Mac laptop. So How about Apple I've or Android? Uh, Android. Android, but you, but okay. So you do. You yeah, like I, I have Mac a Mac laptop because it was available, and I needed a laptop. It was available, and so that's what yeah. I took. Yeah, I actually have one of each too from college and now work. So it's nice to have a mix up there. Favorite movie? <sighs> Hard one, huh? I, it, it, space, space ball. Wait, say space, it one more space time. Spaceball. Spaceball? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, what am I leaving out? Favorite candy? Uh, um, I like Kit Kats, but it only comes from out of there. I love Kit Kats. <laughs> yeah, Kit Kats. That's one nice. of my favorites. And if you could go to any place in time in history, where and when? Uh, I, I am a, I'm from Western New York, so I think I would probably go uh, to back when when Buffalo was in its heyday. Yeah, that could be fun. All right, you survived. Let's get into the you studio tour. All right, it's time for our second episode studio tour. Christopher, I have some pictures I can show whenever you're ready, but go ahead, take it away. Show us uh, what you're doing over there at Willamette University. Yeah, so uh, this is this is my my studio. It's not much. It's really just an office. It's not it's not really so because. Uh, what I do is we're, I, I stream sports, and so our um, various venues uh, around campus, um, from basketball and volleyball gym, uh, soccer, which we'll get to more of, uh, soccer field, and football, baseball, softball. Um, so we're I'm streaming from from wherever we're, we have games. Um, I think um, we have 18 sports um, here at Willamette, and we stream. I think 15 or 16. Um, last year we streamed 80, just about 80 events uh, over the, the course of the wow. academic year. Wow. And, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the real reason I'm, I'm, I'm on here is because of, of my use of uh, the PTZ Optics camera. And um, so there is a, a, a picture of, uh, you can see it way up, way up top of that tripe. Um, that's our. There it is. That's our, that's our PZ Optics camera. Um, oh, actually, it gets cut off there. It's too high. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, 
And so we we stream um, we stream soccer, and uh, because we don't have we don't have a press box, we don't. Uh, you can see the little bleachers across the way. We don't have any real bleachers. Um, and when you're streaming soccer, if you're looking at it from ground level, it's just it's really hard. It's it it doesn't it, it's hard to follow. It it's hard to, to tell depth. And so we needed something where we could get a higher angle. Right. And that's where we. That's where we, we picked up this, um, it's called a Skyhawk. It's from a uh, sports video. Uh, the, the tripod itself is, uh, it's 30 feet tall. It's rock solid. It doesn't sway in the wind. Uh, it's pretty solid. Um, when we bought it 10, not 10, probably five, six years ago, uh, the camera and the electronics that came with it were complete garbage. And I've been searching for something to replace those with for several years. And, um, came across PTC Optics and did a lot of research and looked at a lot of cameras and uh, finally finally settled on on the we got the the PTC Optics the the 20x SDI Gen 2 um, and it's been it's been pretty good for us and um, basically I retrofitted um, some some mounting brackets to get it up there and um, also um, put it in an an outdoor enclosure. That's cool. Yeah, that was that, that is the interesting enclosure. part. I think a lot of people are interested in how you went about doing that. So the the outdoor enclosure that I have is from DotWorks, and it's this is actually the um, this is the enclosure that it's that's recommended on the PTZ Optics website. Um, it's super weather sealed, weatherproof. I mean, this is designed to set the camera outside and just leave it up there. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the perfect situation for us because we're not just setting, we're not leaving it out there. We're taking it down every night. Um, we only set it up for games. Um, and one of the one of the downfalls about this, this um, enclosure that I did not foresee is how sensitive, um, how sensitive the um, the lens was and, and just in, in configuring the, the house and getting things set up. And I don't, I don't know if it can't really, can't really tell, but there, there's a bunch of scratches on here, mm. and so I need to try and get some, um, get some lens polish. See if I can get rid of some of those. Um, but again, you know, like it was designed to get set up and just stay there, so that's not, it wasn't really designed to, to take a, take much of a beating. But I just got to be careful with it now, and now that I know that, that's that's one thing to look out for. Um, but we've got the the housing itself comes with with two um ports and um i added another one basically right now i've got there's one port this one's for power and this is a net this is an, an rj45 connection which we could oh. use for internet but actually what i'm doing is converting rj45 to db9 um mm. and using that for the control um just because it's it's a whole lot easier uh to make an a, a, an RJ5, RJ45 um, Cat5 cable than it is to make it a DB9 cable. Mm -hmm. So you can see inside here. So basically, we've got this little this little converter right here converts um, the RJ45 to DB9, and then this is just a DB9 to D to the the mini DIN that goes into the back of the camera. Um, and like I said, it at some point once the NDI uh, stuff comes out, uh, you know, it, I may limit all this and just use this this RJ45 jack to to bring in network and 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 call it good. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of how we've got it set up, and and I've got it I've got it installed in such a way that you know at the end of the stalker season, I can unplug all these connections and take the camera out, and we can use it for another sport. Maybe maybe we'll use it for swimming. Um, maybe we'll use it for track and field in, in the spring. Um, but one of, one of my, one of my concerns is, you know, when I, when I get all this stuff set up is that, um, I don't have a, I don't have a crew. I don't have, um, um, a, a big, um, uh, like production team. Um, it's basically, I'm getting this stuff set up and then, um, hopefully we have some student em employees that, that, uh, help set it up, but they don't really, they're not. They're not streaming people. They're not technology people. Um, so I need to interns. try and make this setup as, as, as dummy proof as possible. Mm -hmm. 
and and so that's that's kind of what I you know I've got three connections on the side of this this box and and you can't mix them up if it, if it doesn't fit it doesn't go there that's usually <laughs> my uh, my mantra when I'm when I'm trying to get some some help with some setup and um, you know if, if it doesn't fit doesn't go there and um, if it fits you, you're, it. you probably got it in the right port um, so so that's part of what we what what I was doing with this whole setup is to make sure that um, it was it was proof and you know I normally this this thing is this box is sealed up and tight and um, the the work study students just show up and put it on the camera plug in the cables and um, for the most part it's up and running now how does so. that a couple questions about that enclosure because that is really interesting the one thing I wanted to ask you is how easy was it to get the camera in there securely and then the other question I wanted to ask you is, how do you attach it to the tripod? Hmm. So, um, actually, get it in there. There, there. It, it's pretty easy. It comes. There's a. There's a. This bracket right here comes with the the enclosure, um, and you okay. can see there's little little screws right here. If I un, unscrew those, that whole that bracket will pop off, and there's this there's a screw underneath it to attach the camera. Um, so it it actually it. I mean, out of the box, it, it took me about, you know, two minutes to get it in there, secure and and, and ready to go. Um, the this the, these dot works enclosures are are they're really really nice. They're super high quality. Um, more sure. more than what we needed. I just needed something to protect us from the rain a little bit. Um, but uh, they, these work pretty well. Um, and as far as as far as mounting it on the on the back side. Um, you can see it's got these, there's the holes down here and right here. And what I have, if I can reach it, is this doohickey, um, which these, these little bolts basically attach to the, attach to the housing. And then this end right here just slides over top of the, um, to the tripod. This okay. was all part of the original um original thing that we got from us sports video and um i just had to this this you can see the the kind of welding right here originally this piece came straight across and and the old camera came underneath it um which which i could i could put the pt's optics camera underneath it and some of my earlier pictures showed that um but i needed to that that only that only is good uh for the first half of our season when it's not we were in oregon so it rains a lot um so okay. i need to make sure that we needed uh, some some weather protection, and in order to make the that dot works housing fit, I had our facilities plant basically just cut this tab off, bend it up, and reweld it. And um, now I can um, attach funny. attach this. Yeah, and this and normally this doesn't come off. This is normally permanently attached to the the dot works housing, um, except I can't uh, I can't open the housing when it's attached. So I had to do, take it off so I could show you guys the inside of the inside of the housing. I think I have um, a picture here. Is this the picture that you're talking about that has? Yep. yep. That's the, that's the, that was our very first test with it. Um, you know, obviously no rain clouds in sight. So I was, I think I was pretty good that day. And um, <laughs> basically I just used a, a Manfrotto super clamp to clamp it on um, and it worked great. But again, like I said, we were working on trying to get um, something a little, little uh, more weatherproof. Right. We're looking at the pictures now. Starting to get just a, a tiny bit of echo back. It's not from our browser or no. anything, is it? No. Maybe it is. All right. So let's go ahead and roll the credits, and then we'll go jump right into a Q&A. And the giveaway. And the Super. giveaway. Thank you. This is so much fun, Christopher. That is a, such a cool set up i mean i think a lot of people are going to have some questions for you so if you don't mind sticking around we'll go right uh, now you got plenty of time cool another good show that's going to be an interesting one for sure mm -hmm. we get questions about outdoor enclosures all the time they have such a good look at the outdoor enclosures yeah i've never had a close-up look like that though. I've 
Give away soon. Oh yeah, grab the wheel. Oh gosh. Or do you want to wait? Well, I'll grab it. You want me to click out of that? You got it. Got it. Okay. All right, we already have some questions for you, Christopher, that we can just jump into. There's a question about Super. pricing on the uh, the Skyhawk tripod. <laughs> Robert says, does it really yeah. cost eleven thousand dollars? <laughs> Uh, that's what we paid for it. Um, I was, I, at the time I was not in, in full on in the current role I have now. And they basically said, here are three options. Which of these three do you think would be best for us? Mm -hmm. And there are three products from the same company. And um, of them, the Skyhawk looked like it was the best. And when it showed up, um, the, it, it was basically, it was a PTZ, op it, not PT, it was a PTZ camera. And the monitor they sent to us, it was a $30 Walmart DVD player. And oh my God. so, yeah, it's, it, it, like I'm looking at, the, I'm pulling this stuff out of the box. And I was like, are you kidding me? We spent 10 grand on this thing. Um, the, the tripod is soft. And the U.S. sports video, their strength is in their aluminum and, and those type of manufacturing thing. Um, it, yeah, it came with a camera, but it was garbage. Um, and I don't know if the, the tripod is worth ten grand. It, if you buy aluminum stuff that big, it gets expensive fast. Yeah, just the metal in general. All right. So Gene says, "Have you guys a good setup for a mic for scratch audio for the PTC Optics SDI Twenty X Version Two for an easy setup for shows? I'm looking for a down and dirty mic for audio to see oh, the cameras for shows." Yes. Um, if you're looking for a down and dirty mic that you can plug right into the back of the PTC Optics cameras, the Rode mics. Uh, the company is from Australia. Is it R O D E. Or, okay, I thought so. Uh, the Rode mics. We ha a lot of people use them for digital SLRs. You want the ones that actually have phantom power because you want that line level, and it, it literally has a 3.5 output that plugs right into the back of the PTZ optics. They're built to be with a with a camera shoe that so you can put it right on top of a digital SLR camera, but they work perfectly with the PTZ optics. Is down and dirty. I like to use them. Like what does they're, that mean? they're not. I've never heard of that phrase. Uh, down like, dirty? For mics. I don't get what that uh, means. I, actually, I'm not sure what that means as far... I think what he's just saying is it doesn't have to be great. Right. Um, and so, for example... It I was just, right in. Like, for example, like it wouldn't, you wouldn't use that mic for, like, your lead singer or for your live broadcast, mm -hmm. but you could use it... Like, I'm going to go live stream a wedding, and I might plug one into a PTZ Optics just to hear, like, the clapping or the atmosphere of an area, not, like, a really crisp, you know, no-noise situation. Which I plan on doing that, actually. They, they work really well with these PTZ optics. You just throw them in, put it on your tripod, mm -hmm. and you just get some... Um, like, if it's by the beach, you'll hear the waves crashing okay. or something like that. Christopher, um, Ted says, what is the brand and model pole supporting the enclosed camera? The, the, the U, uh, U.S. Sports Video. It's a U.S. Sports Video Skyhawk. Like it, it's, for them, it's a it's a all-in-one product that comes with their own electronics. But like I said before, I think they're... Their strength is actually in their aluminum, so they would probably sell you just the, just the tripod. Okay, so that's good to know um, what pieces of the puzzle you thought were better there um, for that product, especially if it's a big investment. So, is the input on the PTZ Optics cameras line level or mic level? Line level, not mic. So you can't just plug a regular microphone in; it has to be like amplified um, to go in there. And then once you get it in there, and it's an amplified line level audio signal in, like for example, you could plug in your um, smartphone or something like that. Uh, there are, in the IP interface of the camera, there are ways to turn the, it up and down and you can kind of balance it, make it stereo, mono. So you can do some stuff in the, uh, the interface, the IP interface as well. We should do a video on that sometime. Yeah, Getting should. audio it, through that. The, the mic input or the line input on the PTZ Optics camera only comes, the audio only comes through a computer coming out the network right it doesn't come it doesn't come out over the hdmi or the sdi it the new generation two models will go through the hdmi now it will, and, go, it will go through HDMI. yes but it does not go th it does not embed onto the sdi and then if you have the usb 3.0 models it will embed on the usb 3 um but just not the sdi at this point and that's all you know, going to the camera, not coming from the camera. Coming from the camera. The microphone would actually plug into the line in there 
and then the network coming out, the That's HDMI coming out, or the USB coming out would have the audio on it. Gotcha. Um, so Gene's asking with the outdoor enclosure, how does it handle fog on the dome? Because he lives in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> well, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and I can't see it for sure right now. I'm, that is one of the things that I'm concerned about um, once we get to the get to the rainy season uh, when that when the heat builds up inside that enclosure what's what's going to happen um the I, I can tell you for me because it's not a permanent solution it's not up there year round if i get to the point where it's um fogging up i'll probably just drill some holes in the bottom um to let some air flow um but but the dot works has a ton of of different odd they have they have they have these that have built-in heaters. Like if you're in the in the winter, they have built-in heaters and built-in coolers, like enclosures with with basically full um, temperature control systems. Um, but they those get expensive pretty quick. I think this one was I think I, about three hundred bucks from B and H, um, and they they go up to fifteen hundred dollars depending on what bells and whistles you want on them. Okay, that's great. Um, I think that we should do the giveaway because okay. it just ended. So okay. we're going to spin to win with the wheel. It should be fun. Hopefully we land on a free camera for whoever the winner is. Do you have the giveaway clip or nay? Um, oh, well, let's play the giveaway clip. Here we 3, go. 3,600 entries. And now it's time to announce this week's live technology giveaway winner. As noted in the contestant rules, all winners must be present in the chat room to claim the prize or a new winner will be drawn. Drum roll, please. <laughs> All right, All let's right. draw this week's Spin to Win winner. And we have Nicholas Sandhop. All right, are you here, Nicholas from Sandhop? From Highland, New York. Not too far from where you're from, Christopher. No. New York's a big state. A lot of people don't realize it, how yeah. big New York is. But he's from Highland, New York. Nicholas, and, and New York is not just New York City, too. So yeah, that's what everyone thinks. It's like it's yeah. a lot more than. Oh no, that I, I is lived, probably where. Most I lived are. in New York State for 24 years before I even went to New York City. You know, Tess has never been to New York City. You're not missing anything. What? It's the best. I'm not a city. I think person, it's the coolest so city in the world. Kind of the you are missing a lot. <laughs> and I cannot wait to show it. I am was it going one week, two weeks from next now? month? A couple of weeks. We're going the to two weeks, New York, we're going so to New York. I'll probably be having panic attacks. Or Tessa's something, gonna be like, she's not gonna like, because we're gonna literally take a train from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, which is like the country, to literally Madison Square Garden, Grand Central Station, and I just cannot wait to be going up the elevator and see Tessa's face, and we're in Madison Square Garden, eighty foot, not hundred hundred story uh, skyscrapers. Millions of people literally just like I'm ants. Gonna be like, well, I'm going home and walk right back down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, jump so in a cab. Nicholas, are you here? <laughs> um, oh, I forgot. We usually do it like a little countdown timer. I'll mm -hmm. put 30 seconds on there to wait for Nicholas. I forgot we have to go through this. Heat buildup on the inside is a good thing. It will prevent fog. Oh, interesting point, Ken. Very interesting. Yeah, the, the heater blowers are interesting. So I guess that's what the heater blower does. It heats it up and then blows out the condensation. But you don't want your camera all hot, right? Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Or is it okay? I don't know. Maybe when it's yeah, really it, hot, it doesn't get foggy. I don't know. It, well, yeah, the, so there, it, it depends on where you're at. The, you know, if, we, if, you're, if you've got a permanent enclosure um, and you're in Florida, um, you're probably gonna want a little bit, little AC little unit in that number. thing to just keep yeah. your camera cool. Yeah. All right, I don't see Nicholas here if you want okay. to. Okay, we'll repick a winner. Re We've got Dan Hain. Oh, look at that from Spokane, Washington. That's down the road. How far is that from, from Salem? It's about six, seven hours, depending Roughly. on whether or not the, the, the gorge is on fire. <laughs> How, what is the status of the gorge right now? Uh, uh, the, the interstate's open. Um, so I think uh, I think they've got pretty much everything under control, um, but it's it's a mess. <laughs> God, that was a lot of a lot of, a lot of burned, of lot of burned, um, burned areas there. Yeah. 
That, I saw that on the news. I Dan can't is it. here. Okay, Dan's Dan, here. we're going to spin All the wheel right. for you. Wait, let, let me go full screen with the wheel here. All right. All right, Tess, go ahead. One, two, three. Whoa. Whoa, Whoa that was fast. I want to make sure I give you guys a good spin. Here we you go. You want to land on that blue. Uh. Oh, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> so close. Oh, my God. My heart was racing. My heart was racing, too. I feel oh, bad. Oh, Chat Connect Pro. Well, that's the way that we bring in these live chats. <laughs> oh, my God. That was close. Wow. That was crazy. Wow, that's fun though. I think I, I think everyone can agree that we like the spin to win. I think I like it. I think everyone likes the spin oh to win. Oh my gosh. So Whoo! Okay. That was oh that is gosh. such a fun right. little spinning thing. And I love that we can do it live. So um that my heart was That was so much fun. I love doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like literally it was like this. I know. It literally went it to there. Oh, it wanted to go over there. And then it went like that. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that was too much fun. Um, so, Christopher, uh, what is up next for you? Um, so, you just you just finished soccer season, or is soccer season still uh, in the midst? We're right in the midst of soccer season. Um, I've got a – we have a volleyball game tonight that I – that we're – I actually just got um, – um, you can – I got – with. With my cameras here, I just I just picked up um, a second Marshall camera um, oh, that cool. we're gonna, that I'm going to put on right on the on the volleyball net to see if we can get two cameras tonight, and um, then tomorrow we have a huge cross country meet, and I'm going to try and do some um, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and live stream the the finish line of the cross country meet, and I, okay. I've got the basically the results coming in o over overlaying the screen, and um, I had somebody just, recently. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I had somebody recently That's ask fine. me how, about how I would, you know, live stream a marathon. So you might have something that's in the realm of experience with that. Maybe do you like just a, like, like to a have drone the, or something? Yeah. Maybe? Do you just like to have the finish line cam or? It, well, it it's expensive, um, right? Because when you're when you're when you're live streaming that, you're you're doing what you're going wireless, and if you're going wireless, anything more than a hundred feet, that the price starts starts going up quickly um so you could do it but you're you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment i mean mm -hmm. i i could see like a start finish and then maybe like NDI a drone like if you could send a drone up phone, like yeah. three or four hundred five hundred feet because i was dro and then the drone the drone wireless video actually works really well i've done it before we did a tutorial on it and then the the receiver like the remote control for the drone the newer ones they have hdmi output so you can just plug that into a frame grabber plug it in usb to your laptop and get that awesome shot uh but they only last for like the battery only lasts for like 20 minutes yeah um and that could even be dangerous i don't even know well there's all there's all kinds of rules and regulations on drones mm -hmm. and uh, you know if you're flying a drone over people you have to have an faa waiver and Mm. It gets complicated. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, it, and it's it's even dangerous. Robert's asking how many staff or students are on your crew, and you did touch on this earlier. Uh, how do you do I, it? I I've got zero on on my crew. I got one one person. I'm I'm starting to kind of train. Um, most of the people that work for me, they're they're grunt labor. Um, you know, they're they're the the ball shaggers or they're. Um, mm admissions people that before they do that stuff, they'll come and help me set up the tripod or they'll move the stuff out. Um, or they'll, I'll set everything up and they'll, um, you know, like for example, for volleyball, um, until this, until tonight, it's just a one static camera that doesn't move. So I just go set it up and then that's it. Um, we're, we're trying to improve how we do that. And um, uh, part of the problem, and we talked a little bit about this, is I'm at a, a small, private liberal arts school. And so most of our student body is just not interested in production. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're interested in, in how the world works and what we can do to make it a better place. And uh, so my, my student pool is, is slim pickings for, for stuff like this. Live streaming can help with that. That's the argument you <laughs> should make with them. Yeah. <laughs> Getting your message out there or something like that. 
I'm yeah. I mean, tech, they may become more and more interested as they as they see the. It's I so see fun. the schools. I know you're in a small school. I went to a small liberal arts school myself. There's a lot of benefits to the small classes and the small this and that, but you don't get the big broadcast class yeah. or the giant video production class where these people want to get, start doing this. So I feel your pain. I was in a school like that. I went to all the photography courses. There was no broadcasting courses. That's what I was interested in. And actually my school <laughs> didn't actually, Moravian college did not have it, but I know which I know what it feels like. Yeah. The bigger schools get those. They get, they, I almost a lot of times, a lot of the kids who go to those small liberal arts schools, they go because they're thinking, oh, small, cl small classes. But then, and they're great schools, don't get me wrong, but yeah. you envy the 30,000 plus student body schools that have every single everything. And, yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely a give and take. I went, to, I went to a small school, I went to Alfred University, not too far from where y'all are at. And I would not trade it for the world, but there were all kinds of things that I didn't get that the, the big state schools did and yeah. um, it's give and take it's give and take yep. Robert says do you have access to work study students we have two starting next week Robert must do a school <laughs> uh, oh. yeah I we have access to them and like I said I have one that I'm just starting to kind of train um, mm -hmm. so hopefully especially during the spring we've got uh, regularly we'll have a baseball game and a softball game that start about the same time and they are not well, they're close, but I, you got to get in a car and drive to the other. Um, and it's kind of hard to get them both set up um, when they're starting at the same time. So I'm trying to get some some people that can set up the stuff. Um, and really not just set up, because for the most part, setting it up is easy. You know, it, I've got everything labeled and we're not too complicated. It's what happens when something goes wrong, when yeah. something doesn't work right, when dumb, something doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And then you're... Is there someone there who can solve that problem? Yeah. And that's... That's what I'm. I'm trying to get. Uh, you, you know, the one the problem one solver. If you had somebody else, you know, producing. Yeah. And Thomas yeah. says, "Do you have announcers, or do you do a play-by-play -play for your live streams?" Uh, for some of them, um, again, that comes down to comes down to labor. Um, we have mm -hmm. uh, for football. We're actually we're super fortunate in football. Um, our local uh, cable access television station comes in. They bring their million dollar HD TV truck and. Um, so we just take their output and, and put that on the stream and it's great. Yes. Um, and we have, we have play by play and color for that. Um, we have play by play for basket for almost every basketball game. Um, and then everything else we try as best we can to have play by play. Um, it, sometimes we just can't get people, we can't get people to do it. You know, it's play by play is something that, um, you can't, you, you can't just pull some off the street and say, here, Good luck. Um, they need to have a, a interest in it, and they need to um, kind of work at it to to even be uh, listenable. And sometimes we just can't get enough people to to do it for all our sports. But that's our goal. Our goal is to have play by play for every every one of our streams. Let's see what else we have here. A lot of people are relating to you in that. Ken says that he's struggling to get two announcers for high school games. Drake says, um, "I feel that here as well. Two person crew at the moment." What's wrong with these students? I would have yeah. been like, me, pick me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's, I, I it's don't know what to say, yeah. It's just, a, it's a different type of, it's a different type of student. I mean, yeah. we have a, we had a, um, when I first came be... here, I was like, oh, we, we've got a, um, a rhetoric and we have a, we had a media studies major. And I was like, oh, we got media, media studies. All right, let's get some of these kids. They'll be, and the more I kind of, you know, delved into it. They, those were the people, they didn't want to talk about how you do media. They wanted to talk about how media affects the world. Yeah. And it's just, mm -hmm. that's when you look at it at that lens, it's just a different, it's a different type of person that's interested in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one class I took was um, social protest. It was on. So it's, that is what you're reminding me of. And all we talked about was how the media um, covers protests and, <laughs> and different things like that and how it affects society drake's saying that the students are too busy watching this okay, show to yeah. actually wow. produce it that that sheds some light <laughs> Which i could i could there. believe that they're in their dorm room on their ipad and then yeah, they're, 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 they're watching the live stream instead of walking the 100 feet to the gym <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i know well they got a lot of studying to do and he's saying i think drake might have had some success getting a former coach to do the play-by-play -play. And I could imagine that's really just a microphone, yeah. you know? They just mm -hmm. sit there, do the play-by-play -play for the live show. That's really fun. 
yeah, we've we've had some luck with with some former players. Um, we've had we, we've a couple times we've had had players who, um, for one reason or other, didn't complete their their playing career. Um, so they were, you know, they, whether they were injured and they couldn't finish playing, but they still wanted to be involved in the sport. Um, mm-hmm. We've had some luck with with some some of those type people doing play by play. Yeah, Ted also mentioned tries getting some coaches involved on that. So. What are you? What are your streaming numbers? Thomas is asking, and where do you stream uh, to? By the way, uh, so we use um, we use Stretch Internet, um, which is pretty common in uh, college athletics. It's one of about three. Um, well, it's one of two specific okay. streaming providers that most colleges use. Um, some other colleges, um, the the web hosts that that they use also uh, offer streaming. Uh, capabilities um we use we use stretch and um we use it as a conference which is kind of nice so um every there's there's eight other schools in our conference and Mm -hmm. so if we are playing a game at lewis and clark lewis and clark goes and sets up their stream they say that they're playing us and then when you go to our portal it that just shows up on our game so we don't have to we don't have to worry about those away contests because our conference schools are doing Mm -hmm. them and that just it it just shows up on our portal, and so our fans, we just say, "Go to the portal," and that's where all our stuff is, whether so it's home or away. Are doing this, yes. If they have, this is very interesting. Huh, I like this stretch. So a lot of parents are watching, family members. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess you asked about numbers. Um, numbers. It depends on. It depends on the sport, uh, yeah. and it depends on who we're playing too. Um, football are far and away our biggest numbers, Basketball, and um, usually. So we kind of got to take things with a grain of salt when we look at our numbers um, because we know that a good chunk of those viewers are mm-hmm. actually not our clientele. Those are they're the parents of the other team. Um, mm-hmm. But we have to we have to we it's have to counts. produce some good product. We, we we have to produce a good product for them. But we're not we're not charging. Um, so this is a service we provide for our parents and for our um, you know our students and our and our people. Um, and so when we look at those numbers, we we take it with a little bit of grain of salt and that some of them aren't there to see our teams. They're there to see the other team, which is fine. Um, but in, in a football game um, from a, a, a school that's far away, uh, you know, we play a school from Texas or a, a school from Tennessee or something like that. Our numbers will, will, will creep up to about 2000 um, oh, individual great. views um, yeah. for basketball. Um, that's probably Basketball and baseball are probably the second most, and, and those will get anywhere between 50 to 150 mm-hmm. uniques per per That's event. Great. And then some of the smaller ones. Um, I mean, there's been there's been streams where where we've had you know 25, and yeah. it's one of those things where you you can't you, you gotta do, you gotta do them all and and hope your numbers are good for all of them. You can't just mm-hmm. pick and choose and. You know. Yeah, and consistency is, is key too because if you just don't do one, then people uh, wonder, oh, did they stop doing them or should I go next time because they didn't do it that time? And so I'm in right. the mindset yeah. that a viewer is a viewer. I mean, when we do, we we did the Gary Vaynerchuk giveaway, we our numbers blew our normal numbers out of the water, but I'm like, hey, they still watched our show, um, they still watched our broadcast. Yeah, and that and that's 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 makes perfect sense for what you guys do. Um, yeah. For, for us, those like those you get those Gary Vaynerchuk viewers. They may come back to you. Exactly. The people who are, the pe- the parents of the other team are not going to come back and watch one of our games. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that would be rare. So. That's where your mindset is. Yeah. Unless it now a- actually, can we please talk about something I completely forgot to ask you about? Uh, well, actually, I was going to ask you about college scouts, but at this point, they're already in college, right? Is there any chance that? national um like nba nba or nfl or ac- pe- are students like pursuing sports after college are the scouts from the major leagues interested in actually that. watching or are there students that might be sharing this with an mlb team or a farm team that might be going further in their career and and your broadcast helps get them closer to you know seeing that home run and getting it recorded <sighs> Probably not so much at our level. Um, there rarely do people from from our level make it beyond um, beyond college. Um, when you start moving up to Division Two and some of the, some of the you know smaller Division Ones that aren't 
aren't nationally televised, um, uh, I think that would absolutely be the case that, mm-hmm. you know, it, this, this, the web, the live streaming and, and whatnot provides um, opportunities for, for them to be seen, but not, not really so much at our level. Yeah, it's more for the because. But the one thing that I think does happen at your level that might be a little bit different from uh, a local uh, high school, or is that a lot of students? I'm not sure. Maybe not all the students, but there's probably a bit a percentage of the students whose families are remote, and they just yeah, cannot no, make it. We have um, it. It's trended down a little bit, but a couple of years ago, 50% of our student population was from California, um, and we're we're down to about 40% now. So. Forty percent of our students are from California, so those those parents can't. I mean, some of them can. Some of them can fly up for for every game, but most of them can't. And um, so that's that's ultimately why we do this, and that's ultimately why we don't charge for it, is so that we can make sure that the the, the parents of of the students um, have an opportunity to see them compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Robert's asking, have you had any luck with local sponsors in your area for your equipment and so on and so forth? <sighs> Um, a little bit. We, and sponsorship is tough because, um, if you sell a sponsorship, you have to fulfill those duties. Um, you have to fulfill those obligations. And so we have, um, we have some sponsors for our football broadcasts and our basketball broadcasts because those are the ones that we are the most consistent with. We are, we are almost, you know, 99.9% consistent with those broadcasts. And, you know, we have a play by play person to do the ads and, and so we can fulfill, we, we sell against those because we know we can fulfill those obligations. Um, I'm not ready to, to, to sell ads against our softball games because there's not, not every game do we have someone actually like manning the system. Well, you know, a lot of times it's I go there, I set it up, I plug it, I turn the stream on, and then I go do other stuff. Right. Um, so um, it, there, there is opportunity there, but in order for us to realize that opportunity, we have to make sure we have our house in order first. Right. Yeah. Outside cameras, is there any other equipment that um, you think is important to share? Thomas was asking. Um, I mean, hold on. I mean, essential to your production. Oh, oh no! <laughs> We're making him jump. <laughs> um. So, and actually, let me. This too. So until this year, this is this is how we streamed uh, volleyball, um, softball, baseball. Um, it's a little Logitech C920. Um, uh-huh. I think we I think I paid eighty bucks for these. We got a couple of them, and what I actually did is. I put them in these housing. Oh you know, my goodness! Put it right in there um, oh. for softball and, and baseball. I put those in there. I've got a, I think it's a, a thirty foot USB extension cable, and I mount them up there and I leave them there, um, the the whole the whole season. And actually, for softball last year, I forgot to take it down, so it actually stayed up the whole year. So this little <laughs> desktop, this little desktop webcam. Spent uh, spent a year outside in this housing and was perfectly fine when when we went to use it the next year. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, these these little housings are pretty cheap. Um, They're big for that and, little camera. It's funny. It, no, it, it, it is, and I'm actually yeah, they're pretty big. I wish we could get smaller ones, but it if it, it works. works. It works. I, I don't know. I, yeah, and um, like I said, this Drake. year we got I upgraded to the. Well, I'm gonna put the Marshall cameras inside here, mm-hmm. um, but. Um, yeah, these these outdoor cameras and and one of the things for for what I do and and I talked a little bit about this you know with with work study and, and workers and a crew is I don't I don't have a crew I don't have people to man cameras and whatnot and so yeah. as I'm as I was building our streaming operation um, everything was what can I what can I do that requires the least how can I invest in technology that gets rid of people mm-hmm. because we can pay for technology. But we can. People are the hard thing to find, and so that's where these housings came in, the Logitech cameras, and um, you could just flip them on, turn them on, and and walk away. And I don't, I don't need people to run them. Um, and now, as as we're growing, as we're getting bigger, we're getting to the point where we need to have to start implementing. We need people to do multiple cameras and to do mm-hmm. to to bring our, our our productions to the next level. 
So. Drake said in caps, this is exactly what we started with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you hit a, hit a chord there with some of our... Uh, some of our viewers, I think that a lot of people start with a, a webcam mm -hmm. and then the move up to a PTZ Optics, which is exactly, I think, what Drake did as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I see him posting in our user group with his volleyball games. And it really does add, because especially with what Drake does, and now that I've watched a few of them, he follows the action. I think he's got a joystick as well. He must. And he follows the action. And it makes you feel like there's definitely, you know, you're there or a there, it's a more produced. Feel, yeah. Ken says, is AC yeah. power a problem in your various locations? Uh, I, n not, not really. Um, for the most, our biggest problem is, um, has been network is getting, getting network access where, where we need to stream, mm. but we're, yeah. we've been at this long enough that we've been able to, um, we we're hardwired, um, for, for all of our locations. Um, but are you yeah, using actually, power it, 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 over ethernet for that camera on the big tripod? Uh, no, um, because I'm using the ethernet for control. Oh, okay. So once, once, uh, once the NDI stuff comes out, I'm, I'm going to experiment with that and see if I can, um, do, do power over ethernet and, um, get rid of a couple of those cables. Um, yeah. And actually, I don't know if you can see it. So in this, in this camera, in this picture over on the, the tent on the, on the left, in the very left side, there's a white square there. Um, mm -hmm. that's actually, we have a, a, a point to point wireless connection, um, to get our, um, to get our oh. network out at, out at soccer. Um, so there was no, there was power there, but there was no network runs. Um, so it, it's like, I said, it's just points point to point wireless. It's, it's pretty solid. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, we're talking about, um, we're replacing the turf in the field next year. And we're talking about actually burying some, some hardwire lines to get some, a better connection but um they're yeah that is really cool well thank you so much for taking uh almost an hour of your time here christopher we really Absolutely. appreciate it very informative so informative fun stop on the world studio tour it's been great this has been so, so much fun so now here we are in salem oregon where are we going next we're Maybe actually we'll leave america next i don't know well, no, nah, next we're going to California. We're going to Los Angeles for Stay on summer. the West Coast. Stay on the West Coast for oh, a little bit. Oh, this is a special one. Oh, uh, my gosh, I can't believe you're leaving next but, week. Uh, it's actually two weeks because okay. the next Friday is the Grow Your Show Tour. Right. Christopher's going to come back. Ken Richter and James Bond are all going to come on, tell us a little bit about your show, and then we're going to do a viewer's choice vote on who deserves a new camera or a new joystick. Um, and just thank you, Christopher. I really appreciate it. What a fun show. Absolutely. This, this was a blast. And keep doing what you're doing. You're doing such good work. <laughs> you're a hard worker. He probably works with all those games, like late hours. Oh, my hours, gosh. Yeah, and like all games the games he wants. I can't believe it. They need to hire someone with them. My legs hurt. The, um, I'm the old. Pad. I think I just I need to stand longer because look at me. I'm I like know. An old well, woman. You I need get to like... stand up desk with the new offices. Mm -hmm. I would really get one of those. They're really good. Thanks so much, Christopher. Absolutely. Thank you guys. This is a blast.